Welcome back guys, it's your boy Broncos Guru coming back at you again with another one of our fun loving list videos. Today, same as always, nothing's off limits. We're going to talk about the eight types of PWC riders that you will meet out there on the water. And since about half of you probably clicked on this video because of the thumbnail, I'm going to give you what you want straight up front. First one on our list is going to be the female rider. In our types of women boaters video that you will meet on the water, we call this one a unicorn. She owns it, she trailers it, and she captains her vessel. It's a little more common to see women doing this on skis, so I won't call it a unicorn, but I'll tell you what, there's still something very sexy about a woman being out there handling her own ski. Most PWC riders really want to ride solo, and when their girlfriend has her own ski, it really truly does become a more enjoyable experience for both parties involved. She can go out there and rip it up as she pleases, have a good time, bring some friends along if she wants, and not really have to worry about too many other things. And one of the big things she doesn't have to worry about? Well, her boyfriend getting out there and riding around with her on the back doing something stupid. Also, if she has her own ski, well, she has the freedom to ride how she pleases. She can ride as risky or as cute as she really wants to ride. Maybe she wants to bring her own friends as well and she might not feel comfortable bringing her friends on the ski with her man. And you always never know, the female rider's boyfriend may not even have a ski, so maybe he's relegated to the back. And number two on our list is going to be the brand fanboys. Whatever brand they're riding, well, it's almost like a religion. And the fans of these brands can't believe anybody else would ride another brand, even the ones that are no longer in production. Those sea dude dudes, well, they're going to look at you yummy kids and tell you about how they can't believe that you bought that FX Cruiser. Man, you know those things got the 1.8 liter engine in it, right? You know that timing chain's crap and that thing's going to break? Good luck fixing that later. The Yami guys will brag about being on the most reliable ski in the water. And they'll tell those Cowie guys, man, I can't believe that ski you're on. That's stupid. They couldn't even engineer that thing to make a right turn correctly. Good luck on that thing, my man. And of course, those Cowie boys will tell you they call it jet skiing for a reason. And they are on the most capable offshore machine that is made. And there's no way any of you little sea doo fanboys out there are taking your sea doo offshore because you know what? Carbon seal fails. You're going to sink. Number three on the list is going to be the jumper. Their mission of the day is to go ahead out there, chase down these mega yachts and launch their vessel 20 foot in the air. They live by the rule, time on the water, well, that's wasted air time. Some of the stuff these guys are doing is insane. Especially in the evolution of skis, these things are basically small boats anymore at 11 foot and close to 1,000 pounds. This really isn't far off from a Boston Whaler 130 Supersport. But I'll tell you what, you aren't doing any of this stuff in a Boston Whaler. Sea Dude did recognize this as an issue a few years back and decided to come out with a new model called the Spark. The Spark came in at 9 foot and 422 pounds. So basically, this was a mission specific ski for the jumper. Speaking of jumping, if any of you guys are looking to jump from a ski into a boat, your boy Broncos Guru has just listed his boat on eBay. It's a 2017 AR240. Probably the only one listed over there. Go take a look. It's going on a no reserve auction starting this Friday. Also, I want to thank those guys who participated in Instagram and Facebook for sending me things to post on here and the Boneheaded Boaters of the Week series. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Number four on our list is actually two people, but with the same premise. So we're going to go ahead and throw them into the same group right here. And that is Supercharged Rider versus the NA Rider. Kind of like a brand specific guy, both of these guys believe their ski is the way. The supercharged rider doesn't understand why you would buy a ski that can't do 69 miles per hour. I mean, come on, my man, how in the world are you going to keep up in a group ride? Actually, Aspirated Ski Rider will tell you how a NA ski will save you thousands of dollars in upfront cost. Also, save you a ton of time, heartache, and a headache of rebuilding that supercharger later. Well, that's if it doesn't implode your engine first. Then, of course, you have a few brave souls out there. Well, they think that the supercharged skis and the NA skis, well, they're for the plebes. You really want to do something fun out here on the water? Go ahead and throw a turbo on this thing. Number five on our list is going to be the noob. These guys sometimes are going to get things just a little bit confused and a little bit backwards. They're also going to be easily identified down at the ramp. They're going to come up with some new launching ideas you've never seen before. Sometimes it's going to help them get that skis off the trailer easily. Sometimes they're not going to even be able to figure out why they can't get their ski off the trailer. Sometimes they're going to forget just some of the beginner stuff in jet skiing, such as, well, you need to keep your finger on the throttle to be able to turn. Sometimes they're going to forget the opposite, that you need to take your finger off the throttle to be able to stop. Some days they'll forget they need to hang on to the handlebars to even hold on to the ski. Also, 
There's going to be those days where the noob, he'll just get mad at Bass Butter being out there fishing too close to his house. And then of course when they do fall off, we're going to have the episode of them trying to get back on the ski. Number six on our list is going to be the Full Throttle Rider. They don't believe in taking it easy. They are out there on the water for one thing, and that is face melting speed. If you plan to go ride with these riders, you better make sure you have been working on your core as it will take everything you have to hang on to your PWC to keep up with them. It doesn't matter if it's on the open ocean or in the backcountry rivers, they only have one thing in mind, and that is white knuckling that throttle. One good thing for these guys, they don't have to kick out the extra money to get a PWC that has cruise control. Number seven on our list is the Cruiser. This rider is a little different than some of the other ones we've mentioned, as they have no desire to be out there pounding off the waves, they have no desire to be running full throttle around the lake, but this rider will plan their full day out. It'll likely be a 150 mile ride down the ICW or a river, or possibly something going down to their favorite lake or island. This rider enjoys the ride more than anything. The relaxing experience of being on a ski with a cell phone turned on airplane mode may be their favorite tunes playing through a headset. One of the things that I'll usually give this crew away, well, they're going to be wearing some unexpected gear to be out on the water. They're typically going to have long sleeve shirts on. They may even have gloves. They've probably got GPSs on their jet skis, which is something that you don't see all that often. And a lot of times they may even be wearing some type of long pants, whether it be just compression pants or even socks or something because they plan to be out there on the water for 10 to 12 hours and you know what you've got to keep yourself covered if you're going to do that number eight on our list is going to be their tired rider this has become more and more popular over the years as people retire and move to a fixed income keeping a boat seems less and less feasible but skis nowadays they can haul all of your friends and you know what they're a little bit less intimidating because they're significantly less expensive which takes some of the fear out of owning a ski and of course, these things are easy to tow, they're easy to launch, and really, they're easy to get around on. So if you're just looking for something that's fun, especially in a nice retirement plan where you can go out there and enjoy yourself, these things are great. I really hope this is me one day and then I get to get out there and retire and do nothing but spend my days down in South Florida hanging out on a jet ski. Thanks for hanging out to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, smash an anchor on the subscribe button and let us know you enjoyed it. Thanks. Have a good one.